What's up guys, it's Dull Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Angry Cops video. So this one is actually just a couple days old. Uh, I think it's three days old, four days old? Yeah, three days old. And it's, woman steals a hundred million dollars from the U.S. Army. Uh, surprisingly, I haven't seen anything about this. Uh, I haven't seen like any articles or anything. Nobody on Twitter is talking about it. I spent a lot of time just fucking shit posting on Twitter. So if you want to, go follow me on Twitter. But um, anyway, I have not heard about this at all, which is kind of surprising because you, you'd think this would be like all over the news. That's a lot of money. This girl's gonna end up in jail for a long time, probably. But uh, anyway, link to the original video down below, and let's find out what this is all about. She stole one hundred million dollars from the United States Army with a fake charity. How does nobody look at <laughs> this? Hey there, weirdos. Are you running low on cash? Do you need a little bit of extra cheddar to get through the week? Then steal a hundred million dollars from the U.S. Army. Well, why not scam the federal government? Yeah. That's what a money at. It's so easy a caveman could do it. Or I actually thought that he was gonna go into an ad read, and I was just I kind of stole his joke there. Some disgusting little toad with fake eyebrows tattooed on top of her face, like a walking stereotype of Los Angeles trash. Man, I I don't know why people do that. I honestly I knew this one rich girl. I. I her, her dad is a friend of my dad's. They grew up together. He ended up making a bunch of money, like a drywalling company. And this, they grew up like very rich. We used to go like camping and stuff with them. Um, and she would do that thing to her eyebrows from like, as long as I can remember, I remember when we were 11, 12 years old. She was already doing that. Like the, the really thin eye, uh, eye eyebrows, the, like way too much makeup. And Man, I, I used to, she had this one boyfriend, and I used to call them Mal, if Malibu's Most Wanted, because if you've ever seen the show Malibu's Most Wanted, you have all these rich kids acting like gangsters, and that's literally what they were. They grew up in the same neighborhood, both are, like, they had, like, houses that were worth, like, two and a half million dollars, three million dollars, right? And they both acted like gangsters, and would, like, always post the stuff, all the, but, like, like, not even ironically, like, they would do this, like, dead serious, they would post stuff about, like, People don't understand what it's grow like growing up on the streets and shit like that. So I always used to call them Malibu's Most Wanted. Uh, every every time I see girls that have like that kind of makeup, that's all I think about is Ma like the the girl that we used to call Malibu's Most Wanted. I don't even know what happened to her. I haven't seen her in years. Let's all give a hearty welcome to Janet Yamanaka Mellow, or as I like to call Mellow Yellow, because she's just living life on easy. Now I don't want to say it's the biggest bait and switch that someone's pulled off against the United States government, but it is significant. <laughs> you see, Janet here was able to walk away with $100 million. Well, she got caught, but she, she's she been hiding that cheddar since December of 2017, over half a decade. Now I'm gonna go over some of the impressive. things that Janet bought with that multitude of money, but how did Janet get away with getting $100 million from the United States government? Well, Janet made up a business. I'm going to guess it's one of those things where they have a charity and the charity happens to pay her for being on like the board of directors or something like 50% of the money or 70% of the money that they get. You see that so often. One of the, I can't remember the name of the website, but this is one website that breaks down how much money you donate to charity actually goes to the cause based on like what the different charities are. And some of them are insane. Some of them is like 1% of the money. And it's really rare that you get one that's even in the double digits for the money actually going to the cause. So much of it is just going to pay that charity's bureaucracy. And you have, like, the – I don't think they're technically called CEOs of the charity. I'm not sure what the official term is for whoever's in charge of it. But you have these people that are in charge of these charities. That It'll be, like, you know, uh, a charity that's supposed to, like, feed starving African kids. And the person that's in charge of it is making, like, $5 million a year. And it's like, what the fuck, bro? Like <laughs> – Business called Child Health and Youth Lifelong Development. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. I couldn't even find a website for this woman's business, which really just says something about how lazy the army is for looking into this woman <laughs> when she's trying to get millions and millions of dollars. And also, how, <laughs> how she had to be related to somebody. 100%. She had to. There had to be some nepotism involved for that for her to pull this off. I'm assuming. Gullible she thought the army was and she didn't even set up a website. I literally have read dozens of articles about this woman stealing a hundred million dollars and what she stole and how she did it. But I 
there's nothing that goes into what her business reportedly even did. You think the United States government would send out some sort of box checker to look around and see if the building is actually occupied by the business. Oh, look at this. This person has a headquarters and they're there doing work. What did they do for her? Okay, we're here to check out the no. Channel Health and Youth Lifelong Development Headquarters. There's just a, is this the Maui fire pictures? This just looks like a burn pit. Now, a hundred million dollars is just a one with eight zeros behind it. It's hard to kind of contemplate. So let's see how she spent that hundred million dollars just so we can kind of get like a better feel. How about 31 different properties across the United States? Oh my God. 78. That reminds me of the BLM. When BLM, the, the one leader of the one of the BLM organizations, because there was actually multiple, but the one leader of one of the BLM organizations she had bought, I think it was like five mansions for herself, a mansion for her mother, one for her brother, one for her boyfriend who then broke up with her. And then that, I think that was how she ended up getting caught was because her and her boyfriend or I guess ex-boyfriend were like beefing over who should have control of the money. And then people realized none of it was going to Black Lives Matter. And then, or, you know, none of it was going to help poor black people. And then she came out and said like, oh, well, it's going to me and I'm a black person. Therefore, this is going to Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Which is like the funniest, like, it, it, I mean, I guess technically it's kind of true, but it's just. <laughs> Different vehicles, classic sports cars, hyper cars, collectibles, a huge jewelry collection and $18 million in cash still in bank accounts. This bitch spent $82 million. One mm. house, just one of the homes that she bought in Maryland was worth $3.1 million. It had eight bedrooms in it, a 55 car garage, which I guess you're gonna need to store those 78 cars that you bought, still 23 spots short. And it was over 58 <laughs> acres. Now the federal government has already said that she's gonna- Man, honestly, in Maryland? That's a fucking steal. You only, 58 acres what 53 car garage is that what he said in maryland that's a steal that's a good price man she got a good deal on that place i want to know who her realtor is forfeit all of those things i mean i don't know how much money you're going to be able to get back hopefully some of those cars appreciated in value so you can make some of that money back <laughs> don't wouldn't it be interesting if don't. the federal government allowed people to embezzle money because they knew that they would invest it better than they could and then they arrest them and then take the money that they stole and then the money that they made from that money they stole on top of that? Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. I think that could be very real. What, what's still so hard for me to understand is how do you Maybe buy 78 so cars? Could you imagine that woman in some sort of car auction? All right, ladies and gentlemen, get your paddles ready because the next vehicle we're bringing to auction is a 1967 Chevy Camaro Super Sport. Let's start the bidding off. Man, I don't even think there's 78 cars I want. Like, let's see, if I had like unlimited money, I'm trying to think what would I buy? I'd probably buy an old Barracuda, a 69 General E Charger. Um, I'd probably buy like a modern Challenger. Um, I'd buy a Jurassic Park Jeep. Probably buy a DeLorean. I'd want a Daihatsu Midget. Those things are cool. Um, you know, maybe some big trucks so I can tow shit if I need to. But, um, I'm trying to think, like, I guess that's it. So like seven? I, 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 maybe if we count like snowmobiles and shit, I'd buy some of those like snowmobiles, some fucking sea doos and shit like that. But I don't think that's what they count as cars. But yeah, like I, 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 I don't know. I'm not really a car guy, but for me, it's like I, the most I can see me buying is like maybe ten vehicles. Although I say that, and then it's it's probably one of those things where like once you start buying a bunch, you're like, oh yeah, I'll get one of these two, and I'll get one of these two, and I'll get one of these two. And next thing I know, I have fucking Jay Leno's garage. <sighs> That's my dream car. Sold to the creepy lady with the eyebrows in the front row. Yeah. And the next vehicle up to auction is a 1966 Ford Mustang Fastback in mint condition with white wall tires. Ooh Let's start the bid. Oh man, that's my dream car. Sold once again to the lady with the creepy eyebrows and the racially ambiguous face. Ooh, we got a special treat for you <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We got a 2019 Lamborghini Gallardo. What'd you say we started off this bid? On that, oh, that's my dream. Car. So, <laughs> the lady in the front row that looks like a hobbit with Botox injections. And finally, we got a 1999 Dodge Neon. Who wants to start the bidding? Finally, something I can afford. $250.
Only 18 million <laughs> left in the bank. Can you, what a greedy bitch. Could you imagine if she just did the minimum just, just so she could get by with like an actual charity or charitable organization? Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like so, so many of these charities have like 1% goes to that charity. She literally could have just done a million dollars and kept the rest and probably gotten away with it. There are charitable organizations out there that take like 80% of your fucking money and she's done about the same. All she had to do. Man, I wish they only took that much. I can't, I can't remember the name of the website, but there's a website out there. It was being shared around a couple, like a couple years ago and it's it probably still exists, but it goes through like each website like or each charity like UNICEF and fucking all these different ones. Most of them, it's like 1% of the money goes to charity and the rest goes to just paying people, paying the bureaucracy. Right, it's a it's a fucking scam and a half, man. Was take twenty million out of that a hundred million dollars, and she could have set up a fund to put, I don't know, like a thousand kids through college at twenty thousand dollars a piece. And then if the IRS would have looked into her, they'd have been like, oh well, I mean, she's she gave twenty million dollars out of her hundred million dollars of profit to the kids. So, I mean, so far that's kind of a shitty organization that's supposed to be charitable, but. And at least she's doing something. She's not a complete and total fraud, but no. She'd be like 20 times better than any other fucking charity, man. Uh. No, she kept every single dollar. And that's how she got caught, by the way. Not from anybody in the freaking army. Not all the generals and colonels that she had sign her documents and re and re and re <laughs> reapply for these grants over and over again. No, she got caught by the IRS. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you spend money or make it, you can bet your butt that the IRS is tracking every dollar to make sure that Uncle Sam gets his. Plus the IRS has got time. From the articles that I read, the IRS knew fairly quickly based on her tax returns that she filed under her own name, not the businesses, that she was making way too much money. That's right. This dumb broad who worked for the army on a salary of I think 140 or $170,000 a year, something like that, pretty good cash, claimed millions of dollars from her business, the fake bullshit business, on her own personal tax forms. You couldn't even get like a business EIN number, which is like a business social security number, for taxes and just put them all in there. You had to immediately go, ah, shit, what do I do with all this money? I can't believe this one. Couldn't hire the, like, did she just not hire an accountant? You have a hundred million dollars, hire an accountant. Well, I'll just fucking claim it. I gotta claim it. And the IRS goes, wait, how did this bitch that's only supposed to make $130,000 a year end up making 20. Ask Nancy Pelosi. We should probably look <laughs> into that. Some people might say a red flag. And once again, this is the IRS. They'll hunt you down for $20 and then claim that you owe them 20,000 just so you can pay some tax guy to go, whoa, 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 IRS. Actually, we did the paperwork correctly and it is just the $20. Slow your roll. Ask me how I know. <laughs> this entire story, the greed keeps going, and what I would just say is the cherry on top is this dumb Janet and her freaking lawyer, gosh, lawyers, ah, are demanding that she get to keep her federal pension because she's earned it, right? It's not like she did anything that could qualify her ineligible after <laughs> the government tens of millions of dollars the balls to be like, no, wait, listen, I might've stole a bunch of money from the government, but I still worked really hard for like 20 years. So I deserve that pension. You know, I worked, I did the time. All you said is I had to do the time and I did it. So while I'm running away in prison, I would really like to get my pension. Thank you. <laughs> By the time she gets out, she can afford a couple Lamborghini Gallardos because she's looking at a maximum of 142 years. Now I don't think that- Oh. Ooh, oh yeah, because I guess it'll be it won't be one case of defrauding, right? And in the states, the from my understanding, in the states, they'll stack crimes on top of each other. So in Canada, say you get charged with like a bunch of shit, if it's at the same time, usually what they do is whatever's the biggest one that they stick you with, right? So say you get like um, a murder charge and an assault charge and like uh, a drinking and driving charge and like a bunch like five or ten charges at the same time. Whichever one they can actually stick you with that has the highest punishment is usually the one you get. Uh, they'll all go on your record, but that's how they base the time on it. So you would just get like 25 years or whatever it is for murder. 
Um, but from my understanding in the States, they'll just stack them all on top of each other. So you get like your, your six months for drinking and driving, your fucking uh, a year for assault or whatever it is. And then like your 25, like they'll just stack them up. That's going to happen because for some reason, the government is super light on white collar crimes. And I just, I disagree with that because you ruin a bunch of it's because they're all doing it, right? Uh, like I said before, you know, made that quick joke about Nancy Pelosi. I, I think, what a congressman make? Is she, is she a congressman or is she a satin? I can't remember what fucking... I think she's a congress, right? Nancy Pelosi. Um, okay, she's from the, the House of Representatives. Um... So yeah, she she's a, uh, a member of Congress, right? Yeah, so I think they make two hundred and forty thousand a year. How much does a congressman make? One hundred seventy four thousand dollars a year. Okay, so they make one hundred seventy four thousand dollars a year, and yet she has a net worth of I think like two hundred million dollars, and she's been a career lifetime politician. Right. The reason they don't go after white collar crime as hard is because they're doing it. The only time they ever go hard after white collar crime is when you rip off other rich people. Lies and you're taking a bunch of taxpayers' money. And for Christ's sakes, federal government, stop taking my money and giving it to dumb people that are stealing it. A hundred million dollars, a hundred million dollars. And you couldn't have sent some backpacker to go through her back garden and go, how's this bitch got all these properties? <laughs> Where are all these youths and children supposed to be getting better life stuff? I don't see a fucking kid or playground around any of these buildings that she bought. I hope she gets the remainder of her life. Ah, taxes. This is where your tax money's going. I'm not a libertarian, but every day I get a little bit closer to going, hey, you know, taxation is kind of theft, you know? And, <laughs> all right. The best way to support the channel is get Taxation is theft. You, you have no, th there's no way you can disagree with it, right? That's, that's the thing. You, you can't just say, no, I don't want to be taxed and opt out of programs. If, if you had an option to opt out of programs, then uh, you could argue it was not theft, but you're forced to pay for it. Get a shirt or a sticker. Look at me, E4 Mafia. Be careful stealing from the federal government. See you next time, weirdos. <laughs> and what does that mean? <laughs> Damned if I know. I'm mm. gonna get like a plate holder in here. Secure your gear, AC. Secure your freaking gear. I bet you just shut up. <laughs> I wonder if there's anyone in the comments that said that. Uh, <laughs> there's one guy that, that quoted it, but that's it. I was hoping the comments would just spam secure your gear. <laughs> that would have been funny. But, uh... Man, the, the 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 kind of funny thing is he mentioned this. He's like, you know, if, you know, if you donated just twenty percent, you'd be a charity, but just a really shitty one. Actually, if she donated twenty percent, she'd be like one of the best charities around. That's kind of the sad thing is how many of these major charities are just everything goes to the the bureaucratic systems within the charity or like advertising for the charity so they can get more money for it. It's really rare that you actually have a charity that most of the money goes to whatever it's saying it is. And usually they're very small. Um, you know, usually it's like your local church, like some small church that does like, like for example, we have a church uh, in the town, like, well, I guess it's one town over, it's the town I grew up in. Um, and they do like a lot of mission work in like Haiti and Africa and just basically different places like that. They'll go over there, they'll build schools, they'll build churches and stuff like that. But it's all, all the money is just donated from like local people. And then those same local people will then, a lot, a lot of the same people will, uh, they have construction experience, right? They're farm boys, construction workers, blue collar guys. They'll then take that money that everyone from town's donated and they'll go over there and they'll build the stuff themselves, right? So the money is just paid for them to go. The money is just basically all the money goes for them to get over there, uh, basically to feed and house them while they're there and then to build the stuff, right? But that's not the vast majority of charities, especially major, huge charities that everyone knows about. Ma really, really big charities, most of them, it's like 1%, 2%, maybe 3% goes to what you're fucking, you think it's going to, and the rest goes to paying the uh, the CEO or whatever the hell it's called for a charity, like a $5 million a year paycheck. It's honestly insane, but anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.